dear students this is the last lecture of our uh, course uh, this semester so we we have discussed about the multiple regression analysis and uh, so today i will talk about the qualitative information right so <clears throat> what are the what is qualitative uh, information so examples are like gender race industry uh, region rating grade so a way to incorporate qualitative information is to use a dummy variable right so we need to use a dummy variable when we are representing a qualitative information so they may appear as the dependent variable or as the independent variable so in this case if we <coughs> look at this example uh, a single dummy independent variable so if you see wage is the dependent variable and we have the independent variables as female education etc right so in front of the female if they use a dummy variable so wage gain loss if the person is a woman rather than a man so here <coughs> dummy variable would take the form so del 0 would take the form 0 and 1 so 0 means it's not a female so that means the person is male so when we are estimating the wage equation of a man uh, if if the dummy variable is 0 it would represent that this is not a female but a man so we are estimating the wage for a man so but when the del 0 is 1 that means this person is a female and then we would be uh, getting the information or the estimated wage of the female so the dummy variable would capture <coughs> the qualitative information so we would get both the information of the female and the male if we happen to use a dummy variable right so you guys can also uh, consider using a dummy variable uh, if you have like gender in your uh, like a regression or race so we can capture each of their effects so race could be like white black Hispanics right so let's assume uh, zero represent white one represents black and let's assume two represent Hispanic so in the race equation if we have different dummy variables the different dummy variables would capture the estimated effects right so hope that's clear with you guys and uh, so let's just proceed okay so if you see from a graphical illustration of the previous example when we have estimated the man's wage we have seen that <coughs> they have excuse me they have slightly a higher wage compared to the females right so there is like a difference you can clearly see the difference if we uh, observe graphically and there is an intercept shift as well right so men usually earns a higher wage than uh, women so similarly if we are estimating wage amongst different ethnic groups like whites blacks or hispanics it may appear that some groups might have a higher wage than an, uh, like other groups like maybe the whites would have a higher wage compared to the blacks right and uh, so this is an example when we are estimating using race right so the qualitative information is actually captured by this intercept shift right so this is the <coughs> Uh, how it is captured okay so but we also be have to be careful if there is a dummy variable trap all right so dummy variable trap can occur if you have like perfect collinear uh, like variables in the model like here there is a male and here this female right they are perfectly collinear so you cannot use a dummy variable when you have perfect collinearity in the model right you have to be careful like 
you cannot have like education and uh, female and male so here male and female are perfectly collinear so we cannot use dummy variable for male as well as female right because it's a dummy variable trap so this could be a potential uh, exam question right like what is a dummy variable trap <coughs> so when using dummy variables one category always has to be omitted right <coughs> so what's the disadvantage when we omit uh, one category <coughs> it's more difficult to test the differences between the parameters and r square formula only valid if regression contains an intercept okay so these are the problems the disadvantages when we omit uh, the intercept so uh, we need to actually include uh, i mean it, it, it it's better if we have an intercept right so without an intercept it, it, it is kind of uh, you know problematic so let's look at another uh, equation. So estimated wage equation with intercept shift. Uh, if you look at the equation, so holding education, experience, and tenure fixed, women earn $1.8 less per hour than men. Okay. Uh, does that mean that women are discriminated against? Well, not necessarily because female may be correlated with other productivity characteristics that have not been controlled for okay. so there could be you know other characteristics which can uh, uh, which is not being captured here right here just, they just have uh, have like education experience and tenure fixed <coughs> so Comparing means of subpopulation described by the uh, dummies, right? So now, if we don't hold the other factors constants, we would see that women has two point five one dollar per hour less than men. So that is the difference between the mean wage of men and that of women is two dollar and fifty one cent. Okay. So uh, I mean. If we have control for the other factors, it's minus 1.81. But when we don't control for the other factors, that means we don't uh, hold them constant, it becomes a negative 2.51. In, in fact, it increases. Okay? So discussion is, it can be e easily tested whether the difference in means is significant. So we can do like a t-test, right? As we have done previously, you guys know how to do a t-test, right? So it's like, beta hat minus zero by divided by the standard error that way we can test whether they are significant or not right and wage difference between men and women is larger if no other things are controlled for that is part of the difference is due to the differences in education experience and tenure between men and women uh, why do you think that we need to control for these other factors okay the main reason is uh, like women in general would have a lower work experience than men because they uh, uh, become mothers and they have to take care of their children they might take uh, time off from work right maybe one year or two year or three year so women in general will have a lower work experience so if they have a lower ex work experience obviously they will have a lower wage Right? it makes sense that lower work experience lower wage so first we have to control that for those factors so if we can control the factors for uh, the work experience we should also control factors for education because men in general will also have higher access to, uh, to their education right they can uh, study more as they don't have to uh, do childbearing and things like that so first we have to control for all these factors and actually then we should see what is the difference in wage and so if after controlling for the factors <coughs> then the difference in wage would be uh, 
the actual difference between men and women, right? We did similar things in our previous classes, if you guys recall, uh, that women managers usually earn lower than men managers in Wall Street, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So we we also have to you know uh, consider that. So, <clears throat> so this, is, this is another example. So effects of training grants on hours of training. <coughs> so if you see, it's a positive <coughs> coefficient. So that is affecting the hours of training per employee, right? So th there is a treatment group which, which got the grant and there is a control group which did not get the grant, right? So we can see that the grant the person who receives the grant okay uh, actually the hours of training per employee is higher right because if you get a grant then maybe you will get a, a chance to you know <coughs> get more training right uh, so using dummy variable uh, dummy explanatory variable in equation for log y so if you uh, look at this equation. We have log of price uh, as the dependent variable, and we have lot size, square footage, bedrooms, and this is the type of housing. Okay, so if the type of housing is colonial, okay, we can see that the housing price is higher, right? And and if uh, if we do a change in log of price, a change in log of colonial price, we would see that the house price increases by 5.4 percentage points. Okay, so the type of housing. So this is the qualitative information again. So this is again on a dummy variable. And why do you guys think that maybe the colonial houses are uh, you know, um, a little bit more expensive than regular type of houses? Maybe because uh, it holds a tradition and maybe people value more right people might value tradition more more so colonial houses are uh, very nice looking and uh, they might hold certain tradition and people are willing to pay a higher price for it right so the dummy variable here is capturing that right and you guys know that this is like a log lin form right so log is on the dependent variable and linear form is on the colonial so if you have you know reviewed my previous uh, lectures uh, it should be clear how to interpret this right so one unit change in the colonial price we would get a percentage change in the housing price right because this is not in log term <coughs> right okay so we can use the dummy variables for multiple categories so define membership in each category by dummy variable uh, and leave out one category which becomes the base category right so so we can have you know multiple uh, like categories the dummy variables as long as they are not perfectly collinear right if they are perfectly collinear then there's a dummy variable trap so you guys have to be careful where you're using so holding other things fixed, married women earn nineteen point eight percent less than single men, and that that is maybe that is because married women have to take care of the children, they have to do childbearing, and things like that. So maybe that's the reason, and that's why they get lower work experience, and that's why they might have, they might earn a lower wage, right? So, and incorporating ordinal information using dummy variables. So, if you look at this example, <coughs> we have municipal bond rate, we have credit rating. So, uh, the credit rating can be zero means worst, four means best. So, if you have a higher credit rating, <coughs> okay, so. <coughs> This specification would probably not be appropriate as credit rating only contains ordinal information. So here they said a better way to incorporate this information is to de define dummies. 
so the you can define <coughs> four dummies so if you look here so if your credit rating is zero that means <coughs> dummies indicating with a particular rating is applied so if your credit rating is one this dummy would be one the other dummies would be zero right if your credit rating is two then the second dummy is one but the other ones are zero right that's how uh, I mean it can be observed so if let's say your credit rating is three so the third uh, dummy would be one but and the rest dummies would be zero okay? so that way you can capture the qualitative information for each credit rating okay? so that's the end of our chapter and uh, I, I'm a little bit sick so I apologize uh, 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 for that and I hope uh, that it is clear uh, to you guys uh, and if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me uh, review my other videos in the previous lectures and uh, we will have a Stata session on Wednesday where I will teach you guys actually how to access Stata I mean some of you guys have emailed me that uh, how to access the Stata and having some issues so we will discuss that in our last Thank you so much.